Hey, three, two, and three, four. Welcome back to another video. As you can see, I'm dressed up as a wolf today because we're going to be reading a story about a wolf or a popular story from a wolf's perspective. Let's take a look at our project topic or our objective first. Mr. Moser, if you wouldn't mind zooming. How do cause and effect relationships help a reader understand the text more effectively? Wow, there's that mouthful of an objective again. So cause and effect we did last week whenever we read about sharks. Mr. Moser, if you wouldn't mind zooming in on this chart over here. We talked about the cause and the effect, and Mrs. Moser has a song for that. So Mrs. Moser is going to go ahead and quickly review our cause and effect song so it's fresh in your mind. And then whenever we go over our cause and effect chart today, I'll do it again. Okay, it goes like this. Cause and effect, cause and effect, cause and effect, cause and effect, cause and effect. The cause is why something happens. The effect is the result of what happened. Like the wind blew so the leaves fell. Or I woke up because a loud bell. It's easy to get the hang of. It's a strategy that you'll grow to love. So now let's sing this catchy song. We want to do the strategy right, not wrong. Cause and effect. 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 Nice job. Hopefully you were singing along with me. All right, so we know we're finding cause and effect relationships. And it's to help the reader understand the text, which this is our text for today, a fractured fairy tale, more effectively. Lee means in a certain way, like quickly. Now watch me move, move so quickly. So effective, we are looking for understanding better. All right, whew, that's a lot already. So before Mrs. Moser reads our story with all of our props, let's go ahead and take a look at some of our vocabulary words. All right, Mr. Moser, let's look at that first word, please. Go ahead and try to sound it out, three, two, and three, four. If you said the word was bear, you are absolutely correct. Let's go ahead and do our syllables. Bear, one. Let's raise it. Bear, cross it. Bear, tap it. Bear, ooh, ooh, let me tell you a little something about this word, three, two, and three, four. This word is a homophone. Said the same, spelled different, homophone. Because we have the bear as it's stated up here. Bear, in this case, meaning empty. But guess what, three, two, and three, four? We also have a different spelling of bear. B-E-A-R, like a bear in the woods. Okay, so we had that bear as well, like an animal, okay? But in this case, and how it's used in our story today, something is going to be empty or there's nothing left. So when we see the word bear, we're using it to describe something. So let's think about that for a minute. Do you think this word is a noun, person, place, or thing? Something you can touch. A verb, an action something you can do, or an adjective, a descriptive word, using all of your senses. Take a couple seconds and think about that. If you said it was an adjective, you are absolutely correct. We can use this word to describe something. The bare cupboard, the bare booty. So whenever we read this word today, our hand motion is going to be the following because in our story, something's going to be empty and there's nothing left. So we're going to pretend like we're opening up cupboards and then we're going to look inside and watch my face. I'm going to make when we do that, we're going to go. Oh, let's try that one more time. Oh, so we're just so bummed that it's empty. All right. Excellent job. We're going to go ahead and move on to our second word. Mr. Moser, if you wouldn't mind zooming in. I sound it up, please. If you said the word was prettiest, you are absolutely correct. Let's do those syllables. Prettiest. Three. Let's go ahead and dab it. Prettiest. Let's go and hashtag it. Prettiest. And let's go ahead and shark it. Prettiest. <gasps> you should see something at the end of the word. 
R E S T. Woo. Okay. So we know we have pretty. Then we have prettier. Then we have the prettiest, which means the most of something. All right. So in this case, it's most beautiful. Hmm. So let's think about that word for a minute. Do we think that's a noun, a verb, or an adjective? Talk about it. If you said it was an adjective, you are absolutely correct. And it's not just any old adjective. It is a superlative adjective. Because remember, we have pretty. Prettier, which is a comparative adjective because it means more. But then we have prettiest, which is the most of something. So most beautiful. So our emotion will be pretty, prettier, prettiest, the most beautiful. When we got the most beautiful on the top of our face. Okay. Excellent. Excellent job. Are you ready for our third word? Three, two, and three, four. All right, Mr. Moser, let's go ahead and zoom in for this word. Go ahead and try to sound it out. If you said the word was glimpse, you are absolutely correct. Let's do those syllables. Glimpse. One. Let's go ahead and Mr. Measure Dabbit. Glimpse. Let's go ahead and... <coughs> Sorry, guys. Let's go ahead and selfie it. Glimpse. And let's go ahead and b-ball it. Glimpse. Nice job. Let's think about this word for a minute. Let's think, of, let's look at the definition. A brief look. So we look at something, but when I think about that word brief, it's I don't look at something for very long. So a brief look would be like this. Okay, let's try that one more time. So if that's something I can do, do you think that's a noun, a verb, or an adjective? Talk about it. If you said it was a verb, you are absolutely correct. So, as you saw just a few seconds ago, whenever before you figured out that it was a noun, verb, or adjective, we're going to do the motion that Mrs. Moser just said. We're going to look at something, but we're going to look at it quickly. Okay? So, we're going to go. Let's do that one more time. <laughs> nice work. Do you like my, like my gloves tap? Remember my gloves head's bouncing up and down? Excellent job. All right, we have one more word to talk about. Mr. Moser, would you mind zooming in? Sound it up, please. If you said the word was clenched, you are absolutely correct. Let's do our syllables. Clenched. Only one again. Whoa, let's hold it. Clenched. Let's go ahead and robot it. Clenched. And let's go ahead and swim it. Clenched. <gasps> You should notice something at the end of the word. We have ed, which means it happened in the past, and it's a suffix. Our base word is clench. Ooh, let's take a look at what the definition is of clenched. Press together tightly. I wonder what in our story is being pressed together tightly. So I want you to talk or think about what word this is what type of word is this do you think it's a noun a verb or an adjective if you can press something together tightly it's something you can do if you said it was a verb you are absolutely correct it is a verb and for this motion today three two and three four for pressed together tightly we're going to do this can you do that with Mrs. Moser? It's like we have teeth. See, like my teeth I have on my on my costume. And we're going to press down tightly on something like we're biting something. Uh, clenching down on it really tight, right? <sighs> Excellent job. All right. We're going to take a quick stretch break. And we're going to go ahead and get ready for our story. Make sure you get some snacky snacks or some drinky drinks. Stretch it out. And I'll be back in a jiffy. Hey, three, two, and three, four. Hopefully you got a good stretch in. Okay, so first things first is we're going to review our vocabulary words and then we'll get started in our story. Okay, first word is bear. Oh, prettiest, pretty, prettier, prettiest, the most, 
beautiful. Glimpse. And clenched. <sighs> nice job. Okay, we are going to read the story today. Honestly, Red Riding Hood was rotten. The story of Little Red Riding Hood as told by the wolf. <gasps> so we're getting it from the wolf's perspective. So now you know why Mrs. Moses dressed as a wolf. The story is by Trisha Speed Shashkin, and the illustrator is Gerald Gerlais, and the publisher is Picture Window Books. Ooh. So we're going to be looking at some cause and effect relationships in this story when we're done, and there's some other enrichment activities that you can do with this book. Okay, before Mrs. Moser gets started, you know she likes giving you a little background knowledge. I did want you to know that the I thought about the Lord Riding Hood. Hmm, wonder how long that story has been around because this is a fairy tale that we know and it, it's something that's been passed down and this type of story is called a fractured fairy tale it's just like a piece of it and it's told from a different perspective so i thought it was pretty cool that this is the person who's responsible for writing little red writing Hood. his name is charles perrault and he wrote it in the 17th century so a very very long time ago and you know how I always love to think about where he's from and where the first, where uh, Little Red Riding Hood was first uh, talked about and where he got his ideas from. And actually, he is from France. So we have our map of Europe. And Mrs. Moser went ahead and circled where France is on the map. So that way you know where it originated. Okay, let's go ahead and get started in our story. I've got lots of props, lots of things. So here we go. <laughs> chomp, chomp. <gasps> OMG, three, two, and three, four. We are already starting with onomatopoeia. Sa onomatopoeia, sound words. Crash, bang, pow. O-N-O-M-A-T-O-P-O-E-I-A. With a room from here and a room from there, here, from there, room, everywhere, room, room. <gasps> We're starting our story with some onomatopoeia. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just finishing my lunch. My name's Wolf. Big Bad Wolf. You may have heard the story of Little Red Riding Hood. About a girl and her granny. Seems everyone has. My tale is different. Did I say tail? I meant tail. Hee <laughs> hee. He was saying tail, like T-A-I-L, but he didn't mean that kind of tail. He meant a tail, like a tail, like T-A-L-E, like a fairy tale. <laughs> that silly wolf. Once upon a time, I ran out of food. Completely. The cupboards were bare. Oh. The freezer, too. And I'd eaten, eaten every last vegetable and fruit in the garden. Every one. Other wolves might have lunched on little forest critters like chipmunks, bunnies, or squirrels. But I'm a vegetarian. That's right. I don't eat meat. Well, I try not to. I love apples, honey crisp, pink lady, golden delicious, and any kind really. But sadly, it was a long time until the apple harvest. I hadn't eaten in weeks. My stomach growled and howled. It moaned and groaned. It even roared. Then my nose took over. Sniff, sniff. I took a whiff. What was that? A girl? Sniff, sniff. Cake? Butter? In this forest? I had to investigate. And there she was, Little Red Riding Hood. She looked as plump and juicy as a sweet apple. Little Red waved her cape. Isn't it pretty? She said, yeah, 
I said. Aren't I pretty? She said. Was she admiring herself in that puddle? With this cape. She said, I'm even prettier than usual. <gasps> Pretty, prettier, more beautiful. Boy, someone sure was full of herself. My stomach growled. Me hungry. Little Red twirled a strand of her hair. Mother says the cape looks grand with my skin. My skin shines like pearls. Or the meat of a ripe apple, I said, licking my chops. Remember, I hadn't eaten in weeks. Time to chomp. But Little Red said, I can't wait until Granny sees how pretty I am today. I'm bringing her cake and butter from my mother. My stomach howled. Two meals, I thought. Granny for breakfast. Little Red for lunch. And cake and butter for dessert. Where does Granny live? I asked. Little Red pointed. Down there in the clearing, the little brown house. I knew that house. And I had a plan. Let's play a game, I said. Little Red smiled. I'm awesome at games. I bet you are, I said. You take this path and I'll take that path. And let's see who arrives at Granny's first. I will, she said. I'm the prettiest and the fastest. Pretty, prettier prettiest, the most beautiful. <laughs> My stomach moaned. Before it groaned, I ran. No one knows the forest like I do. I chose the shorter path. you think about how this story is making you feel right now? What's your mood? You can talk about your family. Sniff, sniff. I took a whiff. What was it? Apple air freshener? Tap, tap. I knocked at the door. Who's there? Called out a voice. Your granddaughter, I squeaked. <laughs> yeah, right. I brought you cake and butter from mother. Doors open, said Granny. Granny tugged at her nightcap. Green, she said, isn't it pretty? Pretty like a green app, green Granny Smith apple, I thought. Aren't I pretty? Granny said. You must have heard the saying, the apple doesn't fall from the tree. Well, it's true. Chomp, chomp. There's another example of onomatopoeia. <gasps> I had to eat her. She was no Macintosh apple, but not too bad. I still felt hungry. OMG, oh my goodness, can you believe this happening? Let me look at it, watch this on that. <gasps> nom, nom, nom. Nom, 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 grum, grum, grum. That's messed up. Tap, tap. 
Little Red knocked on the door. Who's there? I ca crawled out, crawling in Granny's bed. Your granddaughter, Little Red said. I brought you cake and butter from Mother. Doors open, I said. Lies and freshly baked lies. Little Red walked in and caught a glimpse of herself in the mirror. Is it my cake pretty, Granny? She said, aren't I pretty? I clenched my teeth. This is getting intense. Granny, Little Red said, what deep dark eyes I have. Mm, I said, the color of apple seeds. <clears throat> Granny, she said, what perfect ears I have. Mm, I said, shaped like sharply cut apple slices. Granny, she said, what pretty red lips I have. Mmm, I said, like a red delicious. Granny, she said, what lovely skin I have. Chomp, chomp, on my pia. I ate her up. Nom, nom, nom. What can I say? Things look different when you're hungry. She was no Fuji or Crispin apple, but she was better than nothing. In fact, to be honest, she was a bit rotten. Plus, I got dessert. The end. O-M-G. So now, the wolf was stuffed after eating all that stuff. All right, three, two, and three, four. I want you to think about what do you think would be another good title for this story. I also want you to think about what would be a good character trait to describe Little Red and the wolf. And I'm going to be back in a jiffy. I'm going to get uh, show you what our activities are that you can do for this week and next week. Okay? Bye. Be right back. Hey, guys. So I want to talk to you about some enrichment activities that you can do. First things first, for, like I said at the beginning, I'm going to review our cause and effect song. And I'm going to show you what you can do with the cause and effect this week. Cause and effect. 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 The cause is why something happened. The effect is the result of what happened. Like the wind blew so the leaves fell. Or I woke up because a loud bell. It's easy to get the hang of. It's a strategy that you'll grow to love. So now let's sing this catchy song. We want to do the strategy right, not wrong. Cause and effect. 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 Nice job. Okay, I have a cause and effect chart over here. This is one of the enrichment projects that you can do. We have the cause, which is the why, and the effect is the result of what happened. So I have on our graphic organizer two things for you to fill out. First things first, Mr. Moser, can you make sure that you're zoom, zoomy zoomed in? The first thing says, Wolf hadn't eaten, eaten in weeks. So what was the result of him not eating in weeks? I also have as a cause, Wolf knew the forest very well. What was the effect of him knowing that forest very well? Okay, so if you would like to work on that, that would be amazing. Now, Mr. Moser, if you could go over to the extended enrichment, please. Over here. I know you zoomed in on that picture. <laughs> extended enrichment. Here are two things that you can do. You can compare and contrast Woof from this story to Coyote from our trickster tales. 
So, Mr. Moser, if you could go ahead and zoom over here again very quickly to just show the Venn diagram part, because if you're going to be comparing and contrasting coyote with wolf, you can do a Venn diagram. Remember, compare and contrast two things that are alike and different. And again, we had wolf from our story, but you can also do a Venn diagram because we did Borigita and Coyote. So you can compare wolf to Coyote and Borigita and Coyote. You can compare wolf to the Coyote from Rabbit and Coyote. Or you can compare wolf to Coyote. I can't wait to see what you come up with. The other piece that you can also do, 3, 2, and 3, 4, is... You can rewrite the ending of this story or write your own version of Little Red Riding Hood. I think that would be so amazing. You get to use your create creativity to do that. So those are just some examples of some extended enrichment activities that you can do. Remember, our last raffle is next Friday, May 29th, the last one of the year to try to get those enrichment projects in so that way your name can go in the drawing. All right, three, two, and three, four. I hope you have a wonderful day. I can't wait to see the projects that you come up with. I miss you and love you. Bye.